Good morning. I think he's home with sick kids, um, but I'm thankful that Nathan was able to swap Sundays with me as I'll be traveling. Um, so I, for any visitors, I'm not the uh, preacher that we pay here, um, but I am one of the members, and I have this opportunity to teach you a lesson. Um, so I'm very, very thankful for this opportunity. This morning, um, I wanted to focus on one of the mental obstacles we have to focus on while we, while we live here. Um, and if you think about uh, Nathan's lessons on Sunday nights, um, while we live here under the sun. Uh, every day we encounter obstacles in our walk with Jesus. We face questions, trials, temptations, and pain. Our life is full of both joy and pain, and this is not unique to Christians, but there is something that is unique to Christians. Uh, this morning's topic is about death, and though it's definitely not an exhaustive study, um, my goal this morning is to help us view death from a Christian and not worldly perspective. You might ask why I chose a topic like this. Um, and one of the songs in our songbook uh, has been very thought-provoking for me. Um, that is, God of the living in whose eyes. I'll go ahead and read that real quick. It's 724. But we'll read this to set our, set our perspective uh, before I get going. And that says, God of the living, in whose eyes unveiled thy whole creation lies. All souls are thine, we must not say that those are dead who pass away. From this our world of flesh set free, we know them living unto thee. Released from earthly toil and strife, with thee is hidden still their life. Thine are their thoughts, their works, their powers, all thine and yet most truly ours. For well we know where'er they be, our dead are living unto thee. Not spilt like water on the ground, not wrapped in dreamless sleep profound, not wandering in unknown despair beyond thy voice, thine arm, thy care, not left to lie like fallen tree, not dead but living unto thee. Thy word is true, thy will is just, to thee we leave them, Lord, and trust, and bless thee for the love which gave, Thy, hum thy son to fill a human grave, that none might fear the world to see where all are living unto thee. O breather into man of breath, O holder of the keys of death, O giver of the life within, save us from death, the death of sin, that body, soul, and spirit be forever living unto thee. So I think that gives us a good perspective on death. Um, and when you think about it, we, we are surrounded by death in this life. Uh, approximately 166,859 people die every day. How do we handle death? How, how, how do we view death? And then, of course, how should we view and handle death as Christians. When thinking about death, we know that unless the Lord returns in our lifetime, we will die. God tells Adam in Genesis 3, chapter 17 through 19, let's flip there, And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of, of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground." 
for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Our physical bodies are made of dust, and we will return to dust. Our lives, we can see, will be difficult and painful until this return to dust. We can also see that our lives are considered temporary and short. Uh, Psalms 144, verse 4. Man is like a breath, his days are like a passing shadow. And then also Psalm 39, 4 through 6. O Lord, make me know my end, and what is the measure of my days. Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days a few handbreadths, and my lifetime is as nothing before you. Surely all mankind stands as a mere breath, Selah. Surely a man goes about as a shadow. Surely for nothing they are in turmoil. Man heaping up wealth and does not know who will gather. Our days are measured. We are fleeting. Our lifetime is short and mentioned as practically nothing. Mankind is like a breath and our physical life's accomplishments are rendered irrelevant. They are like a shadow, and when it is over, we have no control over what we've amassed, built, or accomplished. Who better to confirm this than the preacher in Ecclesiastes, who is most likely Solomon. Uh, We'll read Ecclesiastes 2, starting in verse 18. I hated all the toil in which I toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to a man who will come after me, and who knows whether he will be wise or a fool, yet he will be master of all for which I toiled, and use my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes a person who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave everything to be enjoyed by someone who has not toiled for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What has a man from all the toil of striving and striving of heart for which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of sorrow and his work is a vexation. Even in the night his heart does not rest. This also is vanity. We can see that our work here on earth under the sun is temporary. We need to also be very careful who we trust in. Uh, We can see Psalms uh, 146 verses 3 and 4. Psalm 146, 3 and 4. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Our lives, our life and our plans are temporary. I had this written before yesterday. Um, But there was a pretty large event that happened in Pennsylvania that really brought this to mind. Um, If you think about what happened to our former President Trump, um, how he, he was mere inches, if even that, from assassination. We see how people rely on political figures and um, how we're not supposed to put our trust in the princes or political leaders of this world, as man is temporary, but God is eternal. Another thing that some people rely on is living to old age. 
Um, when you study deaths, only about two-thirds of all deaths are considered expected. And that leaves in the remaining third as considered unexpected deaths. Uh, we'll read from Luke chapter 12, 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, what shall I do, for I have nowhere to store my crops? And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. We need to be careful in where we put our focus. Um, we need to make sure that we don't neglect the things of God, um, as we can see this rich man did. And we need to be careful to not think that we have all of life planned out. Um, we can see that he thought... He was all ready. He was, he was ready to live life now. He had worked so hard, and now he could rest and relax. Um, but that was the night his soul was required of him. We also see in the uh, 22 through 31, we'll continue reading. And he said to the disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to the span of his life? If then, what are you not able to do as, as small a thing as that? Why are you anxious about the, the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, uh, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. So we see that we're, we're not supposed to worry. Um, worrying cannot extend our lives. God knows our appointed time um, and we need to be ready, whether that's day or night, within an hour or within 40 years. Um, instead of worrying, we need to focus on seeking his kingdom. We'll continue in Luke chapter 12, verse 35 through 40. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that you may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants." But know that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man 
Uh, For the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. There is a day coming for all of us, for everyone in humankind. Are you ready? Would you be saved if today was your last day? We'll read from Matthew chapter 24, starting in verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree lesson, uh, from the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts on leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you will know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Now concerning the day, the hour, um, and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Uh, Then two men will be in a field, one will be taken and one left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in the part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect." Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has set over his household to give them their food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom the master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master is delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and eat and drink and drinks with drunkards, The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know. And he will cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We know that the the day of the Lord is coming, and we must be ready, as it makes it very clear that we will not know when that day is coming. Next, we'll be reading from 1 Thessalonians 5, starting in verse 1. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need for anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is peace and security, the sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for the day to surprise for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as other as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep sleep at night, and those who get drunk get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and and for a helmet, uh, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live before him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another just as you are doing. This most recent verse is, is an encouragement to us. Uh, we need to be ready knowing that Christ died so that we can live with him. With talking about death, it also brings up um, the topic of salvation. Um, salvation affects our viewpoint of death because we can have hope. Uh, we can have confidence in salvation. Uh, Psalms chapter 73, starting in verse 26. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are far from you shall perish and put an end to everyone who is unfaithful to you. But for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge, and I may tell of all your works. Uh, this shows that our bodies may fail and often do and will fail us. Uh, we can see that God will be judged, but we need to draw near to him as he is also our refuge. Uh, we see again how the Lord is our salvation in Isaiah chapter 25, starting in verse 6. On the mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of um, marrow, of aged wine well refined. He will swallow up on this mountain that covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God, we have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord, we have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The Lord is our salvation. We see that though our body is perishable, Christ saves us from the sting of death. Um, and we'll be reading the scripture reading that Steve read for us as well. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 52. In the moment of in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable, perishable body must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. We see that through Christ, uh, through Jesus, we have victory. Uh, through his death, he has removed the sting of death, the sting of sin. As Christ brings us salvation, uh, we need to remind ourselves uh, that there is also judgment. Uh, Daniel talks about this in Jan Daniel chapter 12. 
I'll be starting in verses 1 through 4. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never, such as never has uh, since been. Uh, there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, everyone whose name uh, shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above. And those who turn many to right, and those who uh, turn many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words um, and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. And then continue in verse 9. He said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are shut up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall purify themselves and make themselves white and be refined. But the wicked shall act wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. But those who are wise shall understand. We can see that many will be purified, but we also see that there are those who will still choose wickedness. Because, because of the choice we have that Tyler mentioned earlier, uh, we, we are creatures who have free will. Uh, we, we have the ability to make decisions. Because of this, we need to carefully examine ourselves and the decisions that we make. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction. For those who enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes, or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruit. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and do mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. We can see, we can see a warning. Um, that the way to destruction is wide and easy. Uh, we can see that everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Not even those who, who do good things. Not even those who prophesy and cast out demons and do mighty works. Um, things that us as humans would judge as great things. Um, but we know that God is judge not humans. Uh, we know what he's looking for instead of the works are those uh, who do the will of our Father who is in heaven. We need to hear God's word and we need to follow God's will. Uh, moment of self-reflection, it's always important to think are you following God's will, or are you following your own will? What type of fruit do you bear? Now, we read good fruit comes from good trees, and this is something that we continually need to assess. 
and something that's uh, definitely beneficial to ask others around us for their input as well. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. Our goal is to all get to heaven together. We need to love each other enough to exhort, rebu rebuke, and reprove one another. But we also need to love each other enough to listen to the warnings from another brother or sister. Uh, lastly, um, as we talk about salvation, it's important to remember our standard. Uh, we'll be reading from Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, uh, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. And the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison, and did not minister to you? And he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the, one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. It's important to remember that God is judge. We are not judges. Our opinions, our perspectives on the day of judgment don't matter. We have confidence because of Jesus, not because of our own thoughts. So I begin to wrap up this lesson, um, I wanted to focus on some specific aspects on how our perspective of death is changed by being Christians. Um, this is definitely not to say that we should not have pain or feelings of loss or, or mourning when someone passes away. Um, God has given us those emotions for a reason. But I found for myself that uh, this perspective or these thoughts can, can help during rough times. Um, and they help with self-reflection as well. Uh, first, I want to encourage you to remember that only good trees produce good fruit. And to question for yourselves, do you produce the fruit of the Spirit daily? Galatians 5, starting in verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. 
and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Secondly, we need to analyze our perspective on life. Are we living for the current, for the here and the now, or are we living for eternity? Uh, first, I'll read from Ecclesiastes 7, chapter 7, verse 1. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death, uh, and the day of death, than the day of birth. Romans chapter eight, eighteen through twenty-five. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage of corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first, fruit, first fruits of the Spirit, groaning inwardly as we wait eagerly as adop for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen, uh, now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, uh, we wait for it with patience. And then 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting in verse 13. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep that you uh, may not grieve as others do who have no hope. But since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you uh, by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, uh, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will ri uh, rise first. Then we who are alive, uh, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. We can be encouraged and know that we don't have to grieve like those who don't believe, like those in the world. Uh, next, I want to remember us uh, to accept God's grace, but to be careful to not take advantage of God's grace. We can see that God is a consuming fire, and we should not dare to attempt to take advantage of his generous gift. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, starting in verse 28. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. And then Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? 
We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into, into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Lastly, I encourage you to remember that our lives are temporary. Um, our, our lives are short compared to eternity. Um, and we need to live our lives for eternity. First uh, John chapter 2, starting in verse 15. Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing, uh, passing along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. As we close, I, I'm reminded whenever I uh, think about death or think about this topic and how we as Christians should view death, I'm reminded of funerals. Um, and in my opinion, the worst feeling on earth is going to the funeral of an unbeliever or even the funeral of someone who's fallen away and from what we can tell has not turned back to God. We know that God is judge. Uh, we know that we should fear him and we need to serve him. Um, thankfully, it's not up to us to judge on salvation. Um, but we know that we can trust in our Lord if you are waiting, waiting to take that step on your journey with God, or if, if you are a Christian and, and you're struggling and you need to return to the Lord, I, I encourage you to not wait. Don't hesitate. We don't know when our final day will be. Um, we, we don't know when we will meet our Lord and our Creator but we need to be prepared at all times. Um, if there's any way that we can help you, I encourage you to come forward as we stand and sing.